have Callista being a possible illusion that maybe they could put into the bottom lane, but Kramer hasn't been stellar. His main picks are the Kate and the Ash, and without those two available, it's gonna be that Zaya combination. So incredible skirmish power from the Freak so far, and they're gonna have to really fight hard in the early game if they wanna stand up to what already SKT is packing in the late game. Yeah, and as that fan sign just showed also, we do have Lee Sin for Peanut, and they just made a little pun on one of his uh, one of his Korean lines about that. Now I'm trying to read this. It seems like left side is Afrika fan, right side is SKT fan. But he says, can we still love each other? Play together? Can we still go together? I think, I think they can. It seems like it's working out. Well, they're here, so absolutely. And Wolf will take his most valued support so far, which has been that Lulu and. With Camille in the top lane, it's only been Cuve, I believe, the yeah. Camille that we've seen so far. And the pick still is viable. It's not that the pick is not possible to play. It's still a very strong pick in the right hands. Remember that if you get locked down in, it's all about the Cataclysm and the Hextech Ultimatum. Nobody can leave the two areas in the top side. So attention in the top lane is the name of the game. And ooh. ooh. OK. We're yeah. on 7-Eleven, and Malzahar is going to come out here. OK, so this pick right now is all about the pushing power. He has been changed so that the Voidling spawn now relies on you hitting your abilities. And Malzahar, if he can get going in the pushing game, it creates endless pressure from the mid lane. And if they can get away with that, couple it with Marin pushing the top side the way you know he wants to play. Because against the Camille, it's Nerf. So she's going to be struggling early on and will always have to respect the Elise threat with the protection from the Tom Kench in the bottom lane. This is a lineup that can benefit Freaks if they play the top side well. Look at Tushin's KDA. I just want to point this out. Average is 2.5, his is 17. How Total, the hell did he totally make that work? Not, totally <laughs> not inflated. <laughs> but uh, I, this is really interesting, too. We're, we're having a Malzahar and a Camille come out, two picks we don't see all too often. And Huni showing that his champion pool is as deep as Max's is on support. Well, when you play Cassiopeia and Lucian top, I, I believe you've already flexed that there are no limits to what you want to play in the top side. And this duo lane from Bang & Wolf will be pushing relentlessly into the bottom lane against Zaya and Tom Kent. So whatever bot lane advantage they can get, Africa must answer in the top side. And you guys are getting one last look at all the compositions here from both of these teams. Lots of ganking power, especially level six for mid, but Jarvan Elise up top will be rough to deal with as well. We'll see if they can help out that Zaya Tom Kent lane in the bottom lane as well. But either way, guys, we're going to be jumping into game number one right away. It's going to be SKT versus the Afrika Freaks for game number one. Everybody coming down to the studio tonight. I'd say we have a full house, much like the two hands that won me big in poker a couple <laughs> days ago. Yeah, that's true. Crumbs had a, a, bi a big night at the casino the other night. Oh, but we won both of those hands against the same guy, yeah, too. One that poor guy. Double full house on the turn and flop. Must have been real mad, but I was glad. Africa, in the meantime, they're just looking for something cheeky in the early game, stacking in the brush, thinking that maybe there was an invade for the Raptor camp. And we have seen teams take advantage of that earlier today. I believe it was H2K waiting in that same spot on blue side. Saw the rise coming in from Rocket and got taken out with a flash bomb. So a dangerous place. Teams are catching on to the patterns that both top laners, junglers, and mid laners are trying to achieve and denying and slowing down the jungler. So it's always important in League to not stick to a pattern and make yourself exploitable. Well, regardless of the pattern, they do get the wards down over here at the Raptors. They do see Peanut starting this. Look at this. This is beautiful. They're helping him out. What a dream. Wow, what That's an amazing leash for Peanut there. And he's going to hit level two, and it looks like he's going to go for a level two invade. 
on he the skipped play. the big raptor and they saw it with the ward so they know what's going on here they know but they don't know entirely what he's up to so he just went right back around it he could have gone for the invade i believe you were right they pointed out okay you've been spotted anyway so it was a great ward on the raptor camp and had the intention been to invade, it would have made sense to skip the Raptor camp because you would not have hit level 3 on that. So mm -hmm. instead, he'll just continue to jungle and still a little bit faster than Spirit, but a cool interaction to see that. We might see teams try that out in the future and make full advantage of an early jungler like Lee Sin. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the bottom lane for SKT missed all that much, even on CS right now, are both of the AD carries. But it looks like Tom Kent was able to pick up three with the shield. Looking at this mid lane, the one thing about Malzahar's Voidlings is now that they die really quickly. The punch from Galio is enough to take him down. Most abilities can make quick work of them. And yeah, there it is. One died right away. He's oh, the enough. cannon. Yep. They're so <laughs> fragile. <laughs> Yeah, especially against the Galio, he's going to be spamming a bunch of his abilities and also that passive that you mentioned. It looks like Huni has created a bit of an advantage in the top side. Peanut is gesturing towards that side of the map, but there is no kill pressure between Malzahar and Elise in the mid lane, at least not this early on. And once Magic Resist starts coming out, this lane will not be that impressive for the Freaks of Vision. So Spirit. Looks like he's moving to the bottom side while Peanut mimics top side. You can see that Peanut, he cleared out everything except his Krugs. Went over to the left side, did Wolves, Blue, Gromp. Went over to Scuttle Crab, so really just a, a full clear. It looks like Spirit did something very similar. Wow, and what a bold move by him there, purchasing a Dark Seal. So he's trying to have a lot of action, but so far from this early game, the laners are playing safe. There's not a whole lot of kill pressure anywhere, and it seems like the purchase, while it does help your regeneration with your potion, you obviously want to be getting those stacks going, and I'm not so sure if he's been having the games that warrant going with such a snowball item. Well, we were talking about the pressure in the top side, and Spirit immediately goes up there with the control ward, denies vision, and you can see that Huni was eating a bit of damage early on in that lane. And definitely going to make things a little bit scary for him up there. He's going to be under sight once again. The wards that were saved from Peanut early on are paying dividends now. He will be looking for those Raptor camps, but Baker shouldn't be afraid of the mid lane. Without level 6 on Kuro and Elise not being so strong to take down these heavy magic damage tanks, aka Gallia, and what was known as the remains of Maokai. He will have no issues with staying overextended in this lane and not giving too much respect to what Elise can do. Taking a look at this spot lane, you were talking about just how well they would be able to push. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, but Kramer is definitely keeping up nearly exactly with the CS of Bang. So it seems like they're not too concerned with that right now. And actually, Spirit's making his way down. There's no ward here. Let's see if they can make something happen. I think SKT is aware that something is up, but at least it's going behind. Now that Tuzan is moving up. Yep, here okay. it comes. Okay, now they know the exhaust comes down. Can he land that cocoon? They're looking for it. They're waiting, trying to bait it out. The exhaust, though, onto Spirit will be enough to save Bang's life. Now they're trying to push it back. Tuzan will get away, and that will be a failed gank in the bot lane. And SKT read the lane out so well. If you notice the way that Tuzan was playing before, just really far back, not quite in range of hitting that tongue lick, but the second he moves up, SKT sniff it out. They know Peanut is not on their side. Both junglers have been mirroring each other for the past five minutes. And as such, they, re they think something is up. They back off intelligently. And while they do lose three summoners, the time commitment means that now Peanut can move to the bottom side of the map, provide backup, and no gank attempt will come back in this lane without their jungler being there to help them out. Also notice that the second they see Elise down in bot lane, uh, Faker immediately goes into the red side jungle of the red team and puts down a control ward and just a regular ward. So they have full vision there. And I do love that, <clears throat> excuse me, that control ward spot is really good. Often doesn't get scouted out. Here comes Peanut into the bottom lane. There is Gallia ultimate available. Here comes a five man. Oh, here we go again. This is what we see all the time. The Miss Q though from Peanut. Will it matter though? Here comes Huni, the TP in from Marin. 
And they're not really making anything happen. A canceled T uh, TP, rather. Guru is making his way down, but that's going to be zero kills down the bot lane. <laughs> what a botched attempt there from SKT. I love the idea, though. They see the timing. They know what the tools they have. But unfortunately, as soon as Peanuts Q misses, they're hesitant in the engage. They don't have quite the damage to commit to it. And the dive is completely botched. And now Africa gets a bit of breathing room. They unfortunately did use their own TP. And we'll take another look right there. Here it comes. They're both low. No mana. While they still have most of summoners, Peanut's trying to set everything up, but it's this initial Q that misses that really thwarts the entire attempt. Yeah, and after that comes in, he, he tanks a bit of tower damage, two shots, so he's already at half health. Pooney misses <laughs> as well. Faker comes in, and he's all alone. He has to back off. No mana either for Bang and Wolf, so they couldn't really follow up. I get the feeling teams are letting Gallia and Zach go through because they've lost faith in teams being able to play them effectively. That's what we saw Africa do two Rocks Tigers where they let Mighty Bear play Zach, and he essentially ended up throwing the game. And then you have this time around where Gallia, even though Faker has shown it, it seems like the ability for going for these dives is still not quite there as the mechanical prowess of the champion, while it is not very high skills of a skill ceiling. It still requires enough coordination for everybody to be on their game. Yeah, very true. And it's also interesting that you mentioned the patterns because when you see the Galio mid on blue side, you just know that that's coming once Galio hits six. So if you know that it's coming 100%, you can prepare for it 100%. I'm, I'm no doubt these teams have uh, come up with ideas and screams about how to prepare against something like that. And, and, you prepare, and, that's, and that's a great point too, the preparation, because if you're SKT and you're reviewing that, right, that will be a critical point for you to look at the game. You'll see the dive, but you won't change much about it. You'll know, okay, our execution was poor, but the vision there was excellent for this dive. And Peanuts hoping for a counter gank to wait in the brush, and while Elise does have mobility boots, there is a chance of this, but back on this setup, the vision that SKT had was perfect. There were control wards in the river. Galio wasn't really spotted while they could sniff it out from him being Mia. Lee Sin was also not spotted. It was off the back of a failed gank, so you know they were low. And as such, the entire play, the orchestration around it was great. Oh, look at this. Going on in is the Camille trying to get out there with the Cataclysm. Now going to turn it around here onto Peanut, who's forced to run away after the cocoon does land. Oh, he's going in. There's Justice, there it is, there's Galio. Okay, comes on in, but good read by Afrika to just back off and time it. Kuro's coming up here, he is six. Gonna lock down Faker into the cocoon. This might be our first kill of the game. First blood does go over to Marin, and Ooh, there's more where that's coming done. from. The flag and drag, that's gonna be two kills now going over to Afrika as Huni sticks around. And wow, they turned that one around real fast. Yeah, SKT read that there was action coming into the top side. That's why initially Lee Sin was gesturing towards that side of the map, but the roam from Malzahar, he came straight from the lane. And look at the, his purchase, straight with boots. He doesn't have teleport, so he can't match the speed at which Galli can rotate, but this is the best he can do. Going with tier two boots early on will allow him to make these moves, and as such, he picks up two assists, and now Africa with a gold lead. Well, we said it before these games started, Afrika is kind of on a roll four games in a row, winning the first game of the series. But you know, we, we've seen SKT get behind before. We'll see if they can actually execute after this. We're going to take another look at the replay and how this all goes down. And this is well played by Marin. Before, they, as soon as they come out, he walks away, playing on the outside. And I believe he dodged the kick with his Cataclysm, or at least dodge the initial interaction, so the kick still remains, and he knows there's Galio to come in, but look at Malzar coming through the middle of the lane, so he didn't come through the lane straight from River, but there is no sight of him, and he gets greedy, thinking of maybe throwing for a flash onto Marin, but as soon as he gets here, there's no chance of a counterplay, and here's Huni where he just misses that stun on the very end. The hook wall shot, the hook shot. So now we got Tushin coming up here with Spirit. We see this all the time. Uh, I think more often than not on red side too out of Afrika. They love to come together, especially when Tushin plays these tanky supports and just lay down that deep vision in the red side. And okay, Faker's gonna get locked up again. The flag and drag, he does flash, but there's the Cataclysm. Will there be a follow-up? Tanky is the Galio, but he will go down in the end. 
And that's Faker now at 0-2. Great timing there from Kura. As soon as he casts Silence, Faker recognizes it. Okay, uses his own dash to get away from it, but immediately decides to use another grasp on it. And with the collapse from Marim, who now has pressure in this lane, Africa's poised to take a Tier 1 in under 15 minutes without the use of Rip Herald. Afrika's showing up big tonight and really just pouncing on SKT's mistakes. You know, we, we can definitely point out all the mistakes, but Afrika making the best of it. And we, and we know they ahead. can close, right? We even know they can close, but can they do two games in a row? It's still early to say for this one as SKT scaling Caitlyn Gallia with Lulu is going to be always a threat. But so far, Africa has been making proactive moves around the map and reading what SKT is trying to do and responding well. See Pang bullying down here in the bot lane with the help of Wolf. And you can see that Afrika, they were thinking about maybe going for the Cloud Drake, but again, it's just a Cloud Drake, and they did get the mid tier one. Got to be careful not to get too greedy. Rift Herald still does remain. Spirit will not find the controller that Faker placed long before, but he does have mobility boots set. And it's a difficult task to account for the speed at which an Elise with mobility boots can catch you. She gets increased speed from her spider form. The mobility boots means that she's just even swifter. And on top of the range in which she can gank, she's one of the strongest threats in the game. It's a great pick and solo queue for that. Oh, look at this. Kuro turning it around. The heroic entrance. But Peanut, he's ticking down. That's going to be another kill. Going over to Afrika off the back of an outplay there by Kuro on to Peanut. Now look at this, coming up is Tushin and Kramer. Faker in a really bad spot, nice taunt, but he will go down again. 0-3 oh, is the Faker, Cataclysm comes down onto Wolf, no flash onto this Lulu, and SKT is being swept off of the Rift right now. Wow, he just got Syndra, Lee Sin tries to go for Kuro, he does still have his flash, and while Galio wasn't quite in range to follow up, commits to it and gets a hundred to zero off the attempt on the blue buff invade and immediately the rotation from two sins abyssal voyage brings in kramer the teleport from marin the collapse is just some something that skt was not accounting for you were talking about two and kramer uh, two and spirit going into the red side jungle together setting up that vision those wards that they set up allow the teleport to come in from marin and we'll take another look right here here no no protection there on Kramer, just gets voided out. He tried to flash for the save, but the teleport from Marin is already here. Abyssal Voyage is committed to the play, and this is just all too easy for Africa to clean this up. Yeah, SKT really trying to go deep, really looking for those kills. Peanut perhaps going a little bit too deep, baiting his team into this one, and a perfect response out of Africa. And you mentioned that Dark Seal on the Elise. We got seven stacks already on the 2-0-3 Elise for Spirit. And Malzahar coming into LCK 3-0-3. And Malzahar is similar to Syndra, where it, as a laner, Malzahar is never your biggest threat. It's easy to read when he's going to engage on you. You can always stay far. He doesn't have crazy moves unless his flash is up. He's never going to catch you by surprise. But as a jungler where your itemization can't be proper to respond to the Malzahar's 100 to 0 potential, where you're always thinking about something else and your range against him is never as linear as it is standing in the lane, he's always a huge threat to you. And Kuro plays full advantage of that and he deletes Peanut. Only have SKT committing to the Cloud Drake. We don't see any response out of Afrika. It looks like the bot lane is coming in for a couple of wards, but I think they'll be happy to just give that one up. But Africa is going to be even happier for this. Now that it's an Infernal Dragon coming up next, if they can get control back in the jungle, that means that they'll be poised to get a much more valuable Dragon in six minutes from now. However, the reason why SKT go for that Dragon is there's no advantages from them to take right now. Committing for a push into the bottom lane will likely result in them getting killed as they are behind in gold. And going for Rift Herald is too risky, so the only advantage that they can really grab is going to be that Cloud Dragon, which it might end up helping them out in the future. It's something that, while you don't see the immediate returns, it's at least an advantage. Something small to slowly bring them back into this one. Like when you're hungry and you just have a couple nuts to get yourself ready for the future, <laughs> like almonds. Just a couple of nuts, Crumbs? Yeah. Not not my snack of choice, but really? you know, to, to each their own. You don't. I, I don't judge. It's, a, it's okay if, if you if you want to just have a couple nuts before you go to bed. It's it's fine. Almonds are great for you. Walnuts are too. 
It's true. Well, Faker, this doesn't look too good for him as Abyssal Voyage is coming in. He commits to the flash, and it looks like he will get out with the uh, heroic entrance, or in this case, the heroic exit, although it wasn't all that heroic. They do trade a power in return, and a positive gain for SKT, burning only the flash out of Faker and the ultimate when they're not in a position to make any moves, still results in them getting the gold that is much needed, especially when it starts getting funneled into that Caitlyn, getting that lane farm bottom side. So Faker going with a worthy sacrifice, but you saw the quickness at which Africa reacted to that. Tucson, you were saying how his KDA is at 17. Well, we're starting to see why. He's hard to kill, and he's fast on the, on the trigger finger. Oh boy, oh, there's not too much vision in here for SKT. Oh, no. They do not see this one coming. Peanut gonna get locked down and nothing can save him at this point. That's going to be our resident Lee Sin going down once again. And Africa seems like they don't really wanna go for this Rift Herald. They need to get control of the lanes there. first. You gotta yeah. push out the lanes before they set it up. They haven't seen anybody on the map. They just see oh. Kaylin. Oh, wow. okay, Wolf. Trying to lay down that vision that I said was desperately needed. Looks like he will escape with the help of the heal from Bang. And he also has to burn his exhaust, and this gives Kramer some time into the top side. And they might be able to get down this turret as Kaylin and Lulu are not too close on this. There are two TPs available, but only really deep ward in the red side jungle. So instead, they'll take the opportunity to start the Rift Herald with Marin taking control over the mid lane in case backup is necessary. Should be an easy take for them. Uh, Huni does have his teleport, but I don't think SKT is really in a spot where they can challenge this. So another big objective going over to Afrika. Generally the objective that's pretty easy to take on blue side, but not when you're this far behind. And now they have to think about how they're going to grow their lead because these outer turrets are not going to be enough for them. They need to accelerate the game faster. You do not want to be facing Caitlyn with Galio and Lulu in the late game. So they need to go for a tier two specifically. If they can crack the tier two into the mid lane, this means that their vision around Baron post 20 minutes will be even deeper and can buy you more time when it comes down to rushing an objective, which you can do easily with all the percent damage between Malzahar and Elise. Even though I think Gal uh, Malzahar's damage isn't quite percent as it got moved to the ultimate, between his Voidlings and his incredible base stats, it really burns it down. Goonies chilling in the brush here, and it seems like they did see him there at the end. Tushin coming on in. Does land the Tongue Lash, but Huni here alone. You can see Faker is rotating down, but it looks like he'll just recall. Things going on to the mid lane for SKT, and it is fancy and going behind. The wave clear from Kura is tremendous to say the least, though, and Alio is still debating whether he wants to assist in the mid lane for the bottom lane, they will lose the bottom lane from that indecisiveness. And so Africa walk away with another objective. And one minute and 40 seconds from now, that Infernal Dragon comes online. And that's an objective that these teams are going to fight for. Well, Faker, you can see he's getting tanky now, even though he is 0-3-0. Does pick up a couple of items from here, has the Merc Treads. Makes it a lot easier to survive against the Malzahar Elise combination. He is tanky, but the times that we have seen Galia go down is always 1v5, and nobody better to make a champion look like they're 1v5ing than Kuro's Malzahar. There are no QSSs online from anybody or even semblances of it yet, and I like that from SKT. They recognize that they're in a position where they need to build damage if they want to have a fighting chance in this game, which means that Kuro's Flash Ultimate is going to be that much more powerful. We saw a bit of a zoom in onto Kramer, who is helping out pushing the lanes. Uh, he is a little bit behind in the CS comparatively to Bang, but Zaya with the Essence Reaver, going to have that Feather Storm up a lot. Well, he has participated in a couple of rotations there, taking mm -hmm. the Abyssal Voyage from Tucson and the Red Side Invade as well. So understandably so for him to be behind in CS. The levels are still the same, and I've always wondered, is Kramer's name a reference to Seinfeld? <laughs> well, Crumbs, you're in luck. They're here in the studio. You can ask them later. I sure will. <laughs> I really will. <laughs> Could be. I'm not sure how popular Seinfeld was here in Korea. But Could also just be his name. Kramer Kim. <laughs> 
That, all right, well, that could be the case. They will start off the Infernal and SKT choosing not to fight. They have no vision and they're not strong enough to do this right now. So it gets taken down quickly and the dragons are all in the favor of exactly what Africa needs right now where they just took the Infernal down and a mountain dragon will come up next and that will help them take down this dragon when it hits that 30 minute mark. They're still powerful enough to solo out the Baron. My bad. And here it comes. Yes exactly what we were talking about. Use that Rift Herald on the tier two. It's already super low and there's actually nobody there to defend, so. Oh, they're gonna take it out first. Wow, that so was... the big charge is gonna happen if, oh, if they stay. That's really anticlimactic, actually. The turret was so low I... already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've seen some bad Rift Herald's, but hold that thought. Huni getting away with the hook shot for now, but we do have the Abyssal Voids coming in with Kuro. A flash away from Huni, and Kuro, he's coming in. The hook shot, though. Here comes Spirit from the left side. There is the nice. cocoon into the blasting cone, and that's going to do it. Finally, they pick up this Huni, who is running away for quite a while, but will not escape with his life. Marin thought the Cataclysm would interrupt the hook shot. Unfortunately, it did not. Gets away easily. Has to blow his flash, and Kuro, unfortunately, tried to burn his flash to take that kill, but that kill on Tuhuni would not have resulted in any advantages from Afrika gain, as Baron is still not an objective that can just force that easily. So, an advantage that would not have normally been there. They were able to trade that Tier 2 in the bottom lane for the Tier 1 middle, so good for SKT to trade that objective, but Afrika's response needs to now be Focusing on the side lanes alternatively with your Abyssal Void again, catching on the split pushers, and here we go again. Hook shot does not get cancelled by the Cataclysm, and here comes Kuro. Not in range. Uh. I love this cheeky move right here, though. Sees he's about to hit the blast gun. Let's get him out of here. Really it's nice. Killed in the trees. Yeah. You gotta hide the body in the trees, man. Don't wanna let them find that Camille later on. And Jesus. a really nice cocoon, too. You thought about this. <laughs> you could say I'm prepared. Don't tell me more. <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave it at that. No vision in here for SKT. They know Peanut's not here, and this is going down too quickly. They're going to be able to easily get this out. SKT just diddly daddling around the mid lane, not prepared for this objective. And oh, go Scott. Okay, here comes Peanut. No, it's not going to happen. He gets locked down. Merc Treads will help for now, and that is one big Galio. And it does look like Afrika was thinking about taking that fight, but after the disengage and lots of stuff used by SKT, they'll just run away with their Baron. Well played there from Afrika. Now they have the big objective to push down their advantage, start cracking some base turrets. It's going to be tough. Only Jarvan will likely be in a position to take a, a side lane turret as a, for a base tower between the Caitlyn traps. And now that she has a QSS, it becomes exponentially more difficult. So they're going to have to get some creative vision and rotations if they really want to get a tier three, as now they find themselves without that Rift Herald. You can see Huni doing his best to try to clear out the wave and make this worse, but really nice cocoon from Spirit. Unfortunately, there is no follow-up. Kuro, still no flash, no nether grasp, and he's actually in the bot lane, so. <laughs> so, looks like they are positioning themselves for that tier two into the bottom side. They're gonna get all the vision coverage in this red side so that they can get the inside track onto the lane. Tucson and Spirit with the buddy system once again, clearing out vision together. Standard stuff overall. If, if they pull this off right, then within the next couple of minutes, they should be able to get this turret. But SKT is not in a position to wait. Their Galio is nowhere to be found. Chunk damage still going down. And the turret will go easy as one, two, three. <laughs> Rika continuing the push for now. Looking for more. Really trying to clear out this wave as fast as possible, even smiting a couple of the minions. Oh, there, there is no chance they can go through this one. They are gonna have to go for a dive if they really want this turret. There is no long range engage here, but Camille is just still pushing to the mid lane. They don't wanna fight this for any reason. They're not prompting Africa to go for a dive without any range. They're just giving up an inhibitor turret for free, and Africa just fully flexing in front of SKT, and they're not taking any chances. SKT saying, okay, you can have this objective. We know that we can't win a fight right now. We'll just let you have it. Kind of not what we expect usually, but perhaps it's the right idea. We'll just have to wait and see. I mean, they're so far behind right now. I figured they would try to 
stall out the wave just a little bit more. However, that does funnel more gold into them, and they're just playing off the timing. They're not comfortable taking the fight by any means right now, and if they were to have lost the fight there, they would have lost the game. There is exactly. Baron still up, so it's understandable for them to do it, just uncharacteristic of SKT. Yeah, definitely a good point. So I feel like they're they're playing to their position in this game right now. See if it pays off for them. Sparon will end pretty soon. Still got about 38 seconds on it. You can see Afrika's kind of joining up. A couple of pings onto the last tier two turret remaining up in the top lane. They're gonna play the exact same card when they go for this tier two top side and. Without the Baron, as it will run out in the next couple of minutes, it's unlikely that they'll be able to get that tier three and inhibitor as easily as they did that first time around. So we might just see them get the objective, go for a recall, base, acquire that new Mountain Dragon, and then go for what is gonna be a new Baron. Here comes Marin joining in the fight, though. Yeah, they're sticking around, surprisingly. They don't have the Baron, as you said. They are grouped up as five. Marin forced into a fight, and Huni will lock him up here. Faker with the follow-up. Marin eating so much damage, but he will survive for now. Does get away with his life. Faker still on the chase, but the cocoon will put an end to that. Huni not able to follow up either. Marin overstepping his boundaries there, not respecting that Kalista or Camille can lock you down with that hexicle, hexicle to make made him, and you can't get out. The follow-up from Bang, not enough. And the face of the mountain from Tucson secures Marin's life. They will now get that Mountain Dragon that was so critical and that means that this next Baron is going to likely be their objective to try to seal the deal and SKT have a timer about five minutes until they actually have to take a fight. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be about just funneling as much gold as possible into some of your carries. Try to have Bang carry from behind when they are down almost 10,000 gold. He does have a QSS. Sometimes we say when you're this far behind, you don't want to take a defensive item like that. But when you're going up against the hard CC engage out of a flash from a Malzahar, I think you just have to have that in your in your arsenal. Yeah, had he if he gets taken out in a fight right away through the Galia Shield, it's not going to be a one fight for SKT. So Ultimatum comes out. Unfortunately, no damage members from SKT are quite there. But between Camille and Galia, see how quickly Jarvan dies. So SKT still have the damage there to take down individual members if they give the time of day to do so. However, Caitlyn stuck on wave clear duty, not able to follow up. At least they get the flash at Marin. Small win. Still just holding on for dear life in this game. And I almost fully expect Afrika to win this game and then lose the second one because they're on this streak of inconsistency. Every series they've played has been 2-1 in one direction or another. And as I said before, the four-game streak of uh, winning the first game and losing the second game. Trying to make that five tonight, perhaps. They're like a Neapolitan ice cream that always has a different order in their flavors. It's like, why are they changing it up? Just keep doing what was successful. Well, they're going to be looking for the 2-0. They've been uh, very strong on the blue side. I think they'll have a, a lot of fun when they do go into game two. Odd for them to take vision in the bottom side right now. Maybe thinking about the inhibitor when it comes back up. But Baron is in 45 seconds. I'd imagine that objective matters more to them. And see Peanut in the top side taking full advantage of the situation, trying to clear out any control wards he can find. And unfortunately for him, most of them are just regular green wards from Africa. So not much vision denial coming out. Even Wolf able to, able to come up here, get one ward down. Should be cleared up though, as we do have a couple of scanners about to get off cooldown. And into this fight, Marin just gonna try to push in top lane a little bit more, make the lanes uh, a bit better in their advantage once they do go for this Baron. 10 seconds on the Baron. They haven't cleared the vision out. It just happened to right now. Lulu and Caitlyn are on the way, but Afrika isn't rushing. SKT, nowhere to be found. They're going to lose this one again. Yeah, with the Mountain Drake, look at how much damage that Baron takes. That is unbelievable. No steal from Faker, although he does get a four-man taunt. This might be their one time. 
Fusion taking a lot of damage to great health, though. Faker still alive, gets another gigantic pump, and SKT looking to take this game back. Let's see if they can do it. There are three kills already. There's going to be the fourth. Kuro still on the run. The last member left with that Baron, and here comes Suni. There's the ace from SKT. Are you serious? <laughs> How do they keep doing this? Oh my god, they lose the Baron right away, but they're all stuck in the pit, and Faker and the Baron against MVP. He was the hero in the Baron pit. He gets so many huge taunts and knock up on his ultimates, keeping everybody in the pit, and nobody goes on bang. They keep focusing on using the Nether Grasp onto Peanut, but the taunt immediately cancels it, and SKT now in full, like, they, <laughs> what? <laughs> The game just blew wide open, ladies and gentlemen. They have their bottom inhibitor bat. There's no Baron on anyone on the side of Afrika. They all got ace. The double four-man taunt by Faker, who started this game 0-3 and, and is now coming back in a big way for his team. And this is huge because it buys them so much time. You saw what Afrika did with the first Baron. Okay, they stalled out, they took an inhibitor. It wasn't enough to crack the base. You cannot crack the base in sieging that easily. But this time around, here comes that Faker taunt. Immediately Nether Grass comes in, but the four-man taunt. And Caitlyn's just free hitting this entire time. Here she goes, just laying down traps. Here comes Camille, but then the knockup. Caitlyn keeps attacking with three and man. It's just so simple for them. Camille targets the Zaya right away, and now without Zaya, there's not enough damage. Everybody's in the back, taunted again by Faker. Just cleaning, shooting fish in the barrel for them. Perfect play, basically, from Faker. The, the four-man flash taunts into the heroic entrance, triple knockup into another four-man taunt. But Afrika had flashes this entire time. You saw the first Baron, they respected, okay, we don't have to take the fight, we can just get out. Instead, they chose to try to stop the fight. I know that the Faker taunt kept them there, but they could have still gotten out. The fight lasted long enough. Instead, they chose to fight, and SKT capitalized beautifully, and now they have a new lease on life. They definitely gave themselves a chance in this one. They still still are behind. Okay, we got another engage coming in here. The heroic entrance as one member looks like Huni was locked up for a very long time. Now Ben getting pretty low. This time Faker gets another big top, and now Marin going into the back line looking for those carries, but the polymorph for so long. These two big tanks going one before for so so long. And it looks like at the end of it all, Afrika will come out on top. Huni did have his Guardian Angel popped too will be forced to back off. And the peel was so well played there from SKT between Huni, Peanut, and Wolf, recognizing how low Bang was with the AOE damage. They back away, they make sure that Marin can't one-shot Kaelin, and they try to keep him alive as long as possible. He does get that final auto in the end, and now Afrika will be able to walk away with the same inhibitor they cracked down earlier, but this will only mean an inhibitor once again, and that Cloud Dragon, a 35-minute Cloud Dragon. Mm -hmm. They still have to wait for that next Baron before they think about cracking the turret, and SKT's Caitlyn will only get stronger from here. Tushin spitting Kramer over the wall. Let's see, we got the Elder Drake coming up next. About six minutes. So, no big objectives right now. Let's take another look at this fight. So, Nether Grass gets used right away, comboed into the heroic entrance, and Peanut's looking for a cool kick here, but Bang steps up a little too forward, gets hit in the AoE, and look at how they play the peel against Marin. Immediate knockup, immediate hexic ultimatum into the flash, the trap, just everything, but Bang oversteps, gets a little too greedy, and does end up getting taken out by the Cataclysm. You know, look Huni. at this, Huni trying to escape again, will not happen as Kuro locks him down with that Nether Grasp. Not sure what he's doing on that side of the map. Probably just pushing out the lane, trying to stall out the creep wave as much as possible. Luckily for them, it is in the bottom side, which means that it is a marathon to get to the objectives that Africa want to take now. And you saw that Bang took advantage of Huni's overextending, pushing out the top side. And Africa now have 30 seconds to reestablish control into their lanes, get more control around Baron when it comes up next. And now we got ourselves a game, a real late game. And as you said, this will eventually favor SKT. They are still behind. 
about six and a half thousand gold. While it favors them from the Caitlyn, we thought the same when it was Africa versus Rocks Tigers, where they had the Renekton in the lake, and Bamarin just made it work. This team seems impervious to what a scaling composition means and what it does. They play team fights out quite well themselves, and if Marin can zone out Bang, if they can just eliminate Caitlyn from these fights while not taking too much damage to themselves, they'll be in a great position. While we have a little bit of a lull in this game, I want to point out that Spirit, he bought three control wards, placed them all in certain, you know, locations in the red side jungle, and then replaced them three in a row, just trying to push forward that vision and make sure SKT had no vision. Then he went back and bought three more, <laughs> and he's looking to do the same thing once again. At so the, Yeah, at this stage in the game, it's chump change for him. An extra item on your six item supportive at least does not mean anything. And as such, it completely understandable for him to do that as prioritizing vision and the chances of you getting a pick in the later stages in the game or getting a better position for your carries or your tanks in a fight will matter way more than him having, mm -hmm. say, a Zanyas or a GA. Or now it would be... It's very true. Look at this. There's no so vision. No follow-up, though, here. And actually, Huni wants to fight this. He's going off the spirit, the heroic entrance. Afrika looking to disengage here. Marin taking a little bit of chip damage on the escape. Will they be able to turn this around? It looks like SKT doesn't want to go in. And will just back off. They get Kuro's flash. That can matter as Baron comes up in 40 seconds. And while Bang does have his QSS without having Kuro's summoner, not only does he become a much more vulnerable target, but his engage and ability to find somebody out of position just goes down the drain. Look at this. Bang stepping up big time, trying to chip away at Kuro's health. Takes a bit of damage himself, but he's got that lifesteal. Whereas Kuro will not. That signature bang for you, engaging with an AD carry, knowing that he has protection and safety between Lulu, his QSS, and own heal, that Kuro just can't turn on him, and as such, chunks him out and forces a recall from Afrika, and this buys SKT time to get the Scuttle Crab. And this advantage means that they can have more time to buy out the wave in the bottom lane, get your vision again, establish your position, and this is the Caitlyn that is almost at a completed itemization. Only Mercurial Scimitar is really left for her. You know, we're reaching that 40-minute stage of the game where everybody who was in a solo lane or was a carry down in bot will be at about six items. Look at this again with the QSS. Will force the repel from Spirit, who is incredibly low. And bang, he's, he, as you said, he's getting near that full item, Caitlyn, looking to take this game into his own hands. And now that he burned QSS for that, he's going to be paying his thank yous to Peanut because he was the one that was able to pop Kuro's flash. And had Kuro had flash right now, they would have had no qualms with forcing a Baron fight, just flash onto Bang and take him out immediately. But now that there's no flash on Kuro, their play still remains the same. They have to be cautious around this objective and always respect Bang. Yep. At the same time though, because that poke damage came out. They force Afrika back, so some vision going over to SKT. You can see Afrika trying to engage here. The Baron has spawned. They can rush it. They do have that Mountain Dragon on their side, and there is no vision for SKT, but they respect it this time around. They won't make the same mistake twice. Look at SKT. They push in the, do the bot lane. They push in the, t uh, the middle lane as well. They're forcing Afrika into a fight. But Afrika doesn't seem to have the option here. Marin, he's going to get jumped on. There's the kick. And even though Pina's going to be locked down, the heroic entrance will save his life. Marin somehow at the same time to survive. But look at this in the bot lane. Huni looking to take that inhibitor turret. He's got the Gargoyle stone play, so he's really hard to kill. But SKT just toying with Afrika. Are you going to start Baron or are you going to answer the call? As long as Marin isn't there, they can't decide. They don't have the tools to engage anymore. And SKT capitalize and get an inhibitor turret out of that. And if they can do that one more time, this could be an inhibitor. But Huni has to base. He doesn't have enough mana. And SKT poised to take these fights if they keep playing the way they are. I love what they're doing here. The tenacity of SKT to stick around in this game. And look at how much Bang is chunking down spirit in these fights. These more squishy targets on the side of Afrika. Nobody's safe from the gun of Caitlyn right now. And it's the late game Elise. All you are is a cocoon. The damage just isn't really there. She has to respect the range that she's at. Anytime that they get chunked, the health advantage that goes towards SKT is too much. Every inch matters in these late game fights. Baker does have a Here's splash. A TP. Okay, the TP coming on in. And Mari looking for the big three-man knockup. 
Bang will be safe in the back line, but look at that, Faker with no support, nobody able to get close enough, but he will go down. Right now it is five versus four, now Hootie is the target. Will eat up Marin here is Tushin, but again, they lost Faker, they don't have that big engage, they don't have those taunts. SKT looking to respond to Baron by perhaps going to Elder Drake. SKT getting a little bit cocky there. Faker, again, he dies in a 1v5. It's that Nethergrass that takes out your Galio immediately, but they're not gonna give this Elder without a fight. Marin's in position and there is Abyssal Voyage. Oh, they're coming on in. Look at Bang in the back. Will he get taken out? Yes, he will. The Cataclysm does take him down in the end. And SKT, they're looking for something in this game, but Afrika doesn't want to give them anything. Now, Huni will have his GA popped. There's no support for him. Wolf will eventually go down. And with the death timer so long, Afrika could look to end this game. That has to be it. They don't have the wave there. Caitlyn's not there. It's the only person they have to respect. Afrika surely will finish the game here. Wow, look at that. This game, it's been flipped over so many times, going from one direction to the other. But Afrika, sticking in it. <laughs> as I was complimenting <laughs> SKT in the, in the beginning here. Now Faker trying to go 1v4 again on this Galio with the help of Peanut. See if they can do that, but Marin's coming back and Faker will be taken out. With only Peanut left alone, it looks like that will be game number one going over to the Africa Freaks. Be it, have we been liberated from Africa's inconsistency and they've found their traction against SKT? It's still game one for them though. <laughs> it's still game one, why is it such yeah. a curse? What did I say? I fully expected them to take this one and then lose game two, but I, I hope that perhaps I can be proven wrong tonight. That was a great game. That was a great game. Africa played early game well. The collapses using Malzahar to gain advantages and Tucson was stellar. The rotations from him. Yeah. He, I, could you, I think you could give him, him or Kuro are my MVPs for, for this time around. Just playing so well. The entire team playing the macro game well and SKT overstepping their bounds over and over. There are looks of confusion on the side of pretty much all of them. Yeah, this isn't what you're used to seeing when you look in the SKT booth. Uni looks the, the most perplexed out of all of them. They're disjointed. That final engage, they they thought they were at a position where Galia could tank and Caitlyn could dish out free damage, but you needed to protect Caitlyn more. It was only the fights where Caitlyn was successful, and this is the early game where a dive was somewhat red from the side of Afrika, and then Uni does fail his hook shot or wall shot, and does die, end up dying two for two, and this is the big one for me, where Kuro outplays Peanut, refreshes that Malefic Visions. Galio commits to being in there, but there's a teleport already on the way from Marim. There's an Abyssal Voyage bringing everybody in. And that's a three for zero advantage in the opposing side jungle without preparation on your lane. So the advantages that Afrika got from this, they barely let go. Their grasp was loosening when it came down to cracking down the base, but in the end, they played well. Yeah, that was... I want to get excited for Yeah, I, I, I want to get like, excited for Afrika as well. But they're they're turning into this team, you know. But when are, we got we got to hold yeah. our breath for yeah, just one more game. We have to wait until they play against the top team. Well, <laughs> so you just got it's a mirror. <laughs> I mean, it, you you can try to predict who the MVP is going to be, but I feel like Spirit in his own way did a ton of small things, you know, helping out with with kills, with picks like that, just vision control on the Elise, the pressure in the top lane early on. This is well played for SKT, protecting the Caitlyn. However, look at how Marin ends up playing it out. He dashes back in, fakes that he's going in, but you always forget about the flag. It's such a minor thing to think about on, on when these chaotic team fights happen, so many calls, but he was aware of it, takes full advantage of it, and uses Cataclysm to get back into the fight. And, 28k damage off of Zaya, mm. almost mirroring the 32 off of Bang. Yeah. That's why I say, you know, it's hard to choose the MVP. I feel like it was pretty much a team effort. You know, everybody on Afrika seems to be playing as a unit, down to the timings of the TPs, the Abyssal Voyages, as you're saying, the, the response to everything that SK tried to do. Uh, Afrika was always right there with the clap back. So, guys, that was game number one, and that was an incredible game. So I hope you stick around with us. We're going to go to a small break before we get into game number two.